My girlfriend keeps her cat food in the top part of her fridge door, and since she feeds her cat at least three times a day, this means the lid is opened and closed just as often. That's fine, but there are small parts missing, which means the lid is loose. So that's something slightly annoying at least three times in her day, every day. When I found one of the missing parts, I realized I could fix the problem by making a copy of it. It seemed simple enough until I took a really good look at it. There's a cylinder in the middle, surrounded by a half cylinder, and a plate on the bottom. When I looked closer, I saw there was a part of the plate chopped off. Still easy enough. I turned it round and found something more complicated. A hole. It looks like a cylindrical hole, aligned with the main cylinder, then with a smaller version of the half cylinder, aligned with the half cylinder above. For some reason, the shape has been smoothed, so there's no sharp corners. I wonder if this is a result of the manufacturing process. There is also a weird line on one side of the half cylinder, which hasn't been softened. This makes it a bit more complicated to reproduce. I wonder if all these geometrical oddities actually have a function in the simple opening and closing of a lid. Then I look at it again and see something I really don't like. It's squint. The whole thing leans to the side and down. I'm again wondering if this is a manufacturing defect or is it perhaps a result of wear and tear. Seems unlikely since it's quite hard plastic and the fridge is quite new. Then I see something else. The top is not flat, it's at an angle. Why? Why make such a small thing so geometrically complicated? I had to make a decision. Either make it exactly like is, or cheat and make an easy version and hope that that works. Since it's a tiny object, it won't hurt to test the easy version first. So, to measure. Main cylinder, 4.5mm radius, 8mm height. Half cylinder, 7.5mm radius, Bottom plate, 1mm thick, 8.5mm radius. The cut in the plate seems to stop at the half cylinder. Main hole, 2mm radius, 5mm deep. Half cylinder hole, hard to measure, but I guess it's 6mm radius. Same depth. I added the weird line, which was 5mm from the edge. Saved it as an STL and printed it out to test at my girlfriend's. Would the cheat work, or would I have to go next level? So I got to the fridge and tested the print. It turned out that there actually was a reason for the squintness, and there was something else that I hadn't thought of. The lid that lifts up isn't a perfectly square box, of course. It's made of angles, as is the part that the lid fits into. So when the squint part fits into the lid, the other squint side fits perfectly with the other parts. No cheating allowed. The other problem was that the hole wasn't big enough, and when I looked closer, the weird line was on the other side. It was then I realized that the part I'm trying to make should be a mirror image of the part that I already have. I took some photos for reference, but I already knew what I had to do. I had to do it properly. So instead of measuring every angle, I just took some photos. In a perfect world, I would use a camera very far away with a huge zoom, but since the object is so small and money, I use my phone. I took the photos and lined them up with the model I'd already made. The shape of the hole in the bottom is so complicated that I decided to just trace a spline of it. I used a taper and a shear modifier to make it squint and chopped the top off with a boolean. Printed it out, it was great, and compared it to the original, putting them side by side and expecting a mirror image. Nope. It was squint in the wrong direction. I think this was because my reference photo was technically the back view and I'd used it as a reference for the front view. Back to the drawing board to flip the chop and the shear, then print. Since there's a gradual slope on the top and the print was made of layers, it was kind of ugly with the steps. I wondered if I should have printed the whole thing at an angle instead, but at that point I thought it was overkill. The print actually looked okay. Not perfect, but acceptable. I took the print to my girlfriend's and excitedly took the lid off her fridge, put the original part back on and tried the print on the other side. The hole was too small again, but after a bit of pressure, I got it on. It looked good, but would it fit in the door? Would it work? I squeezed it in the original side, then carefully put it in the new print side. It fitted. I lifted up the lid and down again. It worked. Now when I lift the lid up and down, I get an immense sense of satisfaction. Three times a day. So if you ever need exactly this part, 
It's for the fridge model, which got me thinking. Why don't manufacturers have STL files for parts of their products available? All the small parts that might get broken. Wouldn't it be nice if they just made them downloadable? So you could print them yourself, or get someone else to print them, instead of manufacturers having huge stocks of tiny parts or no stock at all.